Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you all for being here today. I hail from Indiana, which is the crossroads of America. I've always emphasized the necessity of reliable and safe freight and transport options in my home state. I'm a businessman by background, and I came to Congress to address the challenges facing our critical infrastructure. We need to face both the short term and the long term and put Hoosiers back in the driving seat as well as all those across the United States. The 29,600 miles of highway and 4,500 miles of rail track in our state contributes to the prosperity of not only Hoosiers, but all Americans. We're a national leader in intrastates, home to the second largest FedEx hub worldwide and have the third most freight railroads with 41 lines, including six short line regional railroads in my district, the sixth district of Indiana. We're also very proud that Cummins Engine Company, headquartered just a mile and a half from my house in Columbus, Indiana, is developing world-class innovative solutions to advance cleaner technology. In October of this year, Cummins unveiled cutting-edge technology that would use hydrogen fuel cell solutions to create a Class 8 heavy-duty truck with zero emissions. With our nation's truck and rail freight transport system accounting for 74% of all movement of goods, it is in the best interest of companies like Cummins to embrace fuel efficient alternatives to be profitable and most importantly, reduce the impact on the environment. The American Transportation Research Institute cites greater congestion as a source of excessive and excessive idling and resulting in higher emissions. With companies like Cummins modernizing our vehicles, we should also consider more solutions for reliable freight infrastructure, such as increased rail investment and truck-only lanes or critical commerce corridors. In 2017, truckers alone lost 1.2 billion hours of produ productivity from nationwide congestion. I firmly believe that economic growth in both the trucking and rail industries will lead to greater economic, environmental, and societal impact. Mr. Tymon, in your testimony, you mentioned addressing freight corridors in the next surface transportation bill. I wish more of the industry would join you to highlight the benefit of these corridors or, or truck lanes to physically separate cars and trucks in the congested areas. Even though truckers already pay more than any other entity in our nation's highways, the industry is coming to the table with creative ways to affect these projects. At the beginning of November, Indiana broke ground on a similar project called the Heavy Haul Transportation Corridor, which will pull semi-trucks off the highway with new rail connections, providing easier access to state roads and improve multimodal shipping. Solutions like these are not only tackling congestion, but also create a safer and more fuel-efficient freight system for Hoosiers. Mr. Tymon, I know AASHTO has done studies in the past detailing how truck-only corridors can alleviate congestion and promote safety. How would reducing restrictions on state multimodal freight network funding to allow, for example, more miles for railroad coordination and CCCs help propel our economy? Well, thank you for that question, Congressman. Uh, I think the, the easiest and the best way to promote those types of projects is- Is your mic on? Uh, it, it is. Is that better? Yes. Uh, I think the easiest and best way to provide uh, opportunities for those types of projects is to continue to provide flexibility to the, to the states uh, and to provide funding to them by the formula programs. Uh, these, uh, these core formula programs that have been the foundation of the Federal Highway Program for over 50 years provide states the predictability to know year in and year out how much money they're going to get, and that will enable them to take on innovative approaches, as you're describing in Indiana. 
So I think uh, removing some of the red tape and the barriers and providing states the flexibility to be creative and innovative as they are in, in Indiana is the easiest and uh, it's the best thing that we can do to promote those types of projects. Thank you, Madam Chair, I yield back.